Hey guys, it's Bree, and welcome back to another video. Now, for today's video, I am going to be doing a manga review or a manga first impressions. And the series I am going to be talking about today is Blue Period by Tsubasa Yamaguchi. Now, this series I was very intrigued to try out because I know Tsubasa Yamaguchi from uh, her, I guess, illustration within She and Her Cat, like that one-shot volume. And I really like her style, but I know that she also did a one-shot that I read a long time ago, back when I read a lot more scans. <laughs> so did not read the one-shot in a legitimate way, but it was so freaking good. It was about a girl who was an artist and this guy in her class who was going to tease and make fun of her on a dare from his friends and then ends up being a model for her. And their dynamic is fascinating. It is an amazing one shot. I wish it was in a volume like somewhere that I could buy because I would totally want to own that. But yeah, this like art focused one shot, I was like, damn, that was so good. I hope that Blue Period can bring some of that energy. To be honest, <laughs> after reading that one shot by Subaso Yamaguchi, I'm like, okay, it's, it's a little bit apparent that she might have maybe been inspired by her own one shot to create Blue Period, just because the main character in this reminds me of the other character from the one shot and I was very stoked. So Blue Period is about this boy, Yatora, who is a pretty good student, despite also being kind of a delinquent. Like he is the type of guy to prioritize like hanging out with his friends, but also he studies on the side, but he'll go like partying and drinking till 4 a.m. It is an interesting balance that he is striking in life. And he has kind of come to this crossroads of he doesn't really know who he is or really what he wants to do. He's kind of going about things based on what other people are expecting him to do and kind of what his parents' expectations are versus what his friends' expectations are. So he isn't really passionate about anything in his life until in art class, he is assigned a project where he has to paint his favorite view, which I'm like, man, that is such a classic art class prompt. <laughs> so good. And he was kind of captured by how Shibuya looked in the morning and how blue it was. And he really wanted to capture that. And while creating this piece, he kind of starts to fall in love with art. And that's kind of what this series is about. It's about a guy who hadn't previously been interested in art, but then falls in love with it and decides that he wants to pursue art in his life. Now, I think that a lot of people are aware that being an artist by trade and going to art school is actually quite difficult. Like it's a lot harder than you would think it is. When I was in high school, I was actually in an AP art program that was geared towards making it so that you could go to art school. So I had to go through and do all of the AP art assignments as well as create a sketchbook that could be used in a portfolio review. And at, at the time I was being considered for one of the scholarships to go to an art school in Canada, which I, <laughs> flat out just rejected. I was like, no, thank you. I'm going into engineering like a crazy person. So I guess I can understand this series from a little bit more of a nuanced sense. In fact, the main character kind of reminds me of some of the people in my class for just his temperament overall, just the aspect of him that's kind of delinquent like, like, I don't know, maybe it was just my art class, but there were some kids who were definitely more aligned with that, which I find really interesting. Also, I like the heavy focus on different art mediums and talking about different artistic practices and theory and talking about lighting and shadows and 
just painting in general is just fascinating to me, especially since I took oil painting for six years of my life. So I'm like, mm, yes, I remember that. <laughs> Certainly also remember a lot of stuff from that. So this series so far has definitely struck a chord with me. And honestly, I was very impressed by it. I am impressed by the journey he's going through. And I find funny how he has to kind of aim for like this public art school that's like very hard to get into. And because like all other art schools are just super incredibly expensive, which is very true for most parts of the world, I would say. Like, I don't know if uh, a lot of viewers have ever considered going into art or into an art school. But for example, like, if you want to be an animator in North America, there are a few schools that are kind of the top schools for animation, such as Cal Arts. But as soon as you actually look into the tuition for that school, it's like $50,000 US a year, which is insane and unreachable for a lot of people. Like I would say that even sometimes Canadian tuitions are unreachable for a lot of people at 5,000 to 10,000 per year. <laughs> I also found in Blue Period, his art teacher was really endearing. She reminded me of my own art teacher. So I loved her, of course, as well as just some of the different classmates, like the girls. I'm very interested to see more of them in the future because I felt like right now they were kind of maybe a little bit stock character-ish. Yeah, so overall, I really loved Blue Period. I was really impressed by this first volume and I am super excited to check out the rest of the series. I think that the next volume, I don't know if it comes out in January or at the very end of December, but I will definitely be picking it up. Yeah, and I really recommend this series to anyone. Like Shoujo Shonen, I think if you read either of those demographics, you will like this series and maybe be able to relate to it like I have. Anyways, that's all that I have to say about this manga. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of review, kind of just enjoyed my thoughts about this series, and I hope that you have a great day. Bye!